Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet here with another episode. And uh, today I had a couple of like both an email and a YouTube question uh, about Vim. Uh, one about my color scheme and one about some of the plugins that I use. So I thought I could cover those. Uh, I really don't consider myself a Vim expert at all, uh, but I really do enjoy using it. And I think there's a couple of plugins out there that make uh, using it a lot more enjoyable. Um, so I guess first uh, I wanted to talk about the color scheme. I use this color scheme, Molokai. Uh, you can get it on GitHub, just a little bit, at github.com slash tomasr slash malakai. Uh, I really like it. It works super well for JavaScript. It looks great. Um, I've been using it for a few years now. So that's my color scheme that I use. Uh, and then some of the plugins that I wanted to go over. Um, but before we do that, I guess we could just like make, I have like this empty folder, so we could make kind of like this fake file structure or whatever. Uh, so we can make directories like uh, CSS and JavaScript and, uh, wow, really, really losing it here. Like, you know, we could have like our node modules or you know, something like that. Uh, and then inside, like we could like touch like a JavaScript, like index.js, um, you know, script. I just really want us to have a lot of files so we can kind of poke around. Um, script2.js, things like that. Similarly, we could touch like CSS style.css. Uh, I don't know, some people have like a main.css, a bunch of stuff like that. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of node modules because that would be get ignored anyway. Uh, so we have kind of this like setup here, uh, CSS with two files in it and JS with three files in it. Um, okay, so the first plugin that I like a lot uh, is control P. I think this is like absolute necessity if you're going to be using Vim for more than just single file editing. Um, and for those of you that use like Sublime, I think it's Command T or Control T. Um, you know, each editor has like one of these like fuzzy file finding kind of things. And so what we've got here is if I go ahead and I open up Vim um, and I'm just in the root of this folder right now, uh, I can hit Control P and it'll bring up this fuzzy search um, where, you know, as I type it eliminates options or whatever. And so this works really, really great with larger code bases where you just know the file name, but you don't remember where it is, or you don't want to type it all out. Uh, so, you know, I can type like script.js and these both match. Uh, I can type like CSS uh, and only that one matches. And so basically what you do, and then as you're typing, you can use the up and down, uh, arrow to move through them. And then whatever one you hit enter on, it'll open. So if I say like, you know, just put like, hello from script two in here, uh, save that, and then I open script one and then say, you know, hello from script one in here and save that. Uh, then I can like, you know, jump back and forth. Now I'm in script two, start typing script, bam, now I'm in script one. Uh, while we're kind of at the Vim stuff, another thing, not a plugin that I find really, really handy is if you've got multiple files open, like I'm in script one right now and I jump to script two. And I'm like, oh man, I really needed something from script one. Since it's the last file I had buffered, you can just hit control O and it'll jump back to script one. Then you can hit control I and it'll jump forward to script two. So you can like toggle between two files pretty nicely. Um, that's not a plugin that just comes with them, but control P is really, really great, uh, especially with big code bases. You know, you can find all sorts of stuff. Uh, so we've got the color scheme, we've got control P. The next one, this isn't a Vim plugin, but it's a requirement to use the Vim plugin. This is the silver searcher. Um, so basically there's like a lot of competition over the years in finding like a really fast way to search for some text in a file system. Uh, and kind of the first way people used to do it is they would grep for something. So you can do like a grep dash R and you can find, you know, a certain string in your file system. But that's pretty slow, especially with a big project. So then after that came this one called uh, ACK. Um, and ACK's got a website, beyondgrep.com. And so ACK is just like grep. It has full feature parity, meaning like all the flags are the exact same, except it's way, way faster, which is great. Uh, and then a little while later, uh, AG came out. The Silver Searcher, um, Silver's uh, periodic table name is AG. Um, and so this is even faster than ACK. So this is like a really lightning fast way to find things in your code base. Uh, for Mac users, they have install instructions for everybody, uh, but for Mac users, it's really easy. You can just use Homebrew, uh, which I talked about in a few other videos, but you can get it at brew.sh. I'd really recommend you install it if you're a Mac user um, and then use it to install Silver Searcher. So once you have Silver Searcher, you can go anywhere in your terminal, close out of them, and I can do like ag and I can look for the word script. Um, oh, I don't have it. Brew install. What was it? 
was it? Let's see. This will be good. Brew install the Silver Searcher. Um, so I guess I don't have it on this computer, so I'm going to go ahead and brew install it. Uh, and now I should have it. Yes, yeah, so now I have it. So I can ag for the word script, and it'll find, let me make this a little bigger, um, the two places where I have the word script. And as you can see, it was like really, really fast. You know, I can ag for hello, um, and bam, got it everywhere. So that's really nice, uh, and it'll show you the line number too. Another like Vim tip, which is not a plugin either, is if you know what file you need to go in and you know what line number it is, you can use the plus. So you can use Vim space file number space and then plus the line number, and it'll open you up on that line. Uh, I realize that's not all that impressive because we didn't do a custom line, um, but if you did, like you know, hello up here too. So we ag for hello. Oops, ag for hello. Let me clear it. Uh, ag for hello, we see it's on line 11, and then you can do vim the file plus 11, and it'll open you up on that line, which is really great, especially for files that are bigger than 11 lines long. Um, so then once you have ag, you can, you can install uh, the vim plugin for ag, which I guess we can do together now. Um, and so I'm going to install this, and this allows me to access uh, Silver Searcher right from vim, which is really, really great. So it goes ahead and installs it, and then after that, when you have Vim open, you can just do, let me close that out, you can just do a command AG uh, and type in your thing. Uh, let's see, got nothing. Where am I? Oh, I stayed, sorry. When I ran that command up here, it looks like changing directory into Vim bundle was one of it, and it just didn't change me back. So uh, CD into the video that I'm doing, open Vim, and now I can... Now I can do ag here for hello. And so we've got that kind of nice UI that we had before, except now we don't even have to type in the file name. We can just hit enter and it'll open us up in that script and it leaves it open so we can kind of check all the different instances. Uh, this might look a little bit confusing, but if you can see in this bottom area where my cursor is moving and here, like maybe I can make it a little, like look a little smaller. Um, you know, so we have like the, the main file is up here. Uh, you know, this would have like your code in it goes here. Uh, but then we have this other window down here, which is the Silver Surfer. Uh, and so anytime we hit enter, it replaces that buffer up there. So if I switch to this other file, that's good. Uh, you know, all those kind of things. Um, so that's nice. Uh, for those that are wondering, you use control and then WW to hop between these two. So every time I WW, it hops back. Um, so that's really, really nice. Uh, a really good experience there. I'm going to close it again. All right, so we've got the Silver Searcher installed, then we've got the uh, plugin for Vim installed, which is awesome. The next one is Fugitive, uh, which is an amazing Git plugin. Um, it does kind of all the things that you could, you would probably ever want uh, for Git. So we can do like a, you know, git init, um, then we like do a git add a, uh, git commit, foo. Uh, so now we have like all these things in here, they're all set. Uh, so we can go ahead and we can like open one of them, we can type hello, uh, and then actually let's go back into one of these, and let's just like ch make a small change. So we've got that, so we can do things now like do a git diff, uh, and we can see right here that the old version up here had hello, the new version down here has three L's, so it'll like show you this diff uh, in a really nice way. Um, we can also do git status. Uh, and you can see like that git status that you're used to, what, what files have been modified. Again, it's really nice being in the editor because if you want to look inside this file, instead of having to reopen Vim, you just hit enter uh, and it opens it up for you, which is great. Um, so yeah, it comes with like a whole bunch of different stuff. It's really great for big projects. You can do all of your git stuff right from inside the editor and the documentation is really nice too. So that one's great. Uh, and then the very, very last one is this nerd tree, which I've been kind of hiding away each time. So I have it set. So you open Vim on a directory, uh, and it'll open up this nerd tree. Um, so you can like expand, you can collapse, you can create new files in here. You can just do a question mark at any time when you're in the nerd tree to see all the cool stuff it can do. Uh, and then a question mark again to close it. Um, so this is great, and then you can do control N to show and hide it. So you know, if I'm in this file, I'm ready to edit, I control N to hide it, uh, you know, I type some stuff, you know, save it, and then I'm ready again to see my nerd tree, control N, go back to here. Um, the last thing I kinda wanna touch on with the nerd tree is if you edit your vimrc, uh, 
you can see these lines right here. Uh, this is me saying control N should toggle it. Otherwise you'll have to type in this like whole word each time. So I take that map C end and nurture toggle. But then this is the real nice stuff. And it's actually on their docs as well. Somewhere down here. Here it is. Oh, yeah. So basically what we want to do here, and I really like this, is if I open Vim on a file, one particular file, uh, it'll open it with no nerd tree because I'm just trying to edit one file. Whereas if I open it on a directory uh, with no file chosen, it'll open up a nerd tree for me uh, so I can choose it. So I think that's a pretty good line to put in your Vim RC. Um, and cool, that concludes it for us. That's uh, the Vim plugins that I think are really, really necessary to be having a good time in Vim. I hope you enjoyed.